Wednesday because the secretary is testifying all day tomorrow in the Senate and all day on Wednesday in the House. So she will surely be covering the world uh, in those testimonies. I have one thing at the top, and then we'll go to what's on your minds. Uh, my, my topper message is simply on behalf of all of us to congratulate Iranian film director Oscar Farhadi on his Oscar win yesterday for his film A Separation. This is the first time that an Iranian has won the Oscar. And uh, this is a film that really gives the world an invaluable picture of life in Iran. We applaud his achievement and celebrate the vibrancy and historical greatness of the independent film industry in Iran. Let's go to what's on your minds. Now that the, the dust has settled from Tunis, um, we saw the EU sanctions today on Syria, um, more talk coming out of the UN in Geneva. Um, can you put this all together and say how your government and the, your partners are any closer to stopping the violence in Syria now? Well, thank you for that, Brad. As you know, more than 60 nations came together in Tunis in the Friends of Syria meeting to increase the pressure on the Assad regime. And as the Secretary had called for about a week before the meeting, this pressure is taking uh, three forms. The first is obviously to increase the sanctions on Assad and his people. If you look at the communique from the meeting, all of those countries agreed that we should do all we can to institute travel bans on senior members of the regime, to freeze their assets, to stop purchasing Syrian hydrocarbon products, to cease infrastructure investment, cease financial services transactions with Syria, reduce diplomatic ties, and consider closing embassies. Those were the recommendations of that group. We see the EU today, as you noted, Brad, immediately follow up with its own tightening of sanctions. Uh, in particular, it's uh, called for a, a cut, cut off of cargo flights to and from Syria. It's designated seven senior regime officials, and it's restricted the purchases of diamonds and uh, heavy metals, which uh, fuel the regime's coffers. So there's the sanctions track to increase the pressure on the regime. In addition, we have created this um, multinational humanitarian initiative under the UN's auspices. Uh, this will be consolidated under the um, UN's leadership. The emergency relief coordinator of the United Nations will have overall uh, support and coordination of the individual donations from nations. As you know, the Secretary announced an additional $10 million from the United States going to by uh, things like food supplies, water, blankets, hygiene kits, heaters, winter clothing. So the UN will manage this effort. They will do so by creating these humanitarian operational hubs in the neighboring countries surrounding Syria. They will also be aided in this work by uh, a, a group formed by the Friends of the Syrian People, which is called the Syrian Humanitarian Forum, primarily made up of the EU and the Arab League, which will assist the UN in thinking through both how to get humanitarian aid in and in uh, evaluating the needs, etc. The third track of the Friends of the Syrian People is to continue to work with the opposition, both outside and inside Syria, to um, help them articulate their vision of how the peaceful, democratic, unified transition should go forward. As you probably noted, the Syrian National Council was well represented at the Friends of the Syrian People, and the conference recognized them as a legitimate representative of, of the Syrians, while also noting that we work with the groups inside. Uh, the president of the Syrian National Council made a very strong statement to the conference, particularly underscoring that their vision of Syria's future is a state which operates under the rule of law and which provides uh, equal opportunity and human rights protections for all of its citizens, regard regardless of ethnic origin, religion, or, ge or gender, a very important 
public statement for those Syrians who fear for their future or those Syrians who are suffering from Assad's effort to rip the, the country apart and to divide Syria along ethnic or sectarian lines. So in answer to your question, primarily, uh, we think the best solution here is still a political solution, that it is the violence perpetrated by the regime that is ripping the country to shreds. So we want to see the guns silenced. We want to see the humanitarian aid allowed in. We want to see the peaceful transition begin in a unified way. And we will keep the pressure on, including having countries from around the world now, not simply the Arab League, the EU, and the US, but countries now also in Asia, Latin America, et cetera, increasing the sanctions pressure on Assad. Just picking up on your last point, um, <coughs> you want to see the guns stopped, you want to see the violence stop immediately. I, th I would assume that is the number one goal at this point. How, how do these things do that? Because it hasn't happened today, it didn't happen yesterday, it hasn't happened any of the days over the last several months. Uh, how, does, how do these three things, you have a punitive element with the pressure, you have a humanitarian element, and you have um, a Planning diplomatic system. element with the with the with the opposition. How do do any of those do anything to stop the violence immediately? Well, fundamentally, we have to increase the pressure on the regime until it silences its guns. So, in addition to all of these measures, as you heard the secretary say in her public comments, both in Tunis and in Morocco, and in some of the interviews that she gave over the weekend. We are also reaching out to Russia, to China, to countries that are continuing to um, protect the Assad regime and encouraging them, even if they don't agree with us on all of the steps for Syria's transition, to nonetheless use the influence that they have to convince him to silence his guns, to allow the humanitarian in, even if it's only for a few days, a day, we have got to help the people of Syria. We've got to provide a way forward. So first and foremost, to ask and appeal to Russia, China, Iran, other countries that may be able to prevail on him to allow, uh, to allow the humanitarian aid in. But the second point that the Secretary, I think, made very clear, both in Tunis and in some of the interviews that she did afterwards, is that we are also appealing to people inside Syria who are continuing to support the regime, who are continuing to aid the regime. She had a, a very uh, impassioned comment directed at the Syrian military and directed at the business community that still supports Assad. Uh, as she said, specifically, uh, the longer you support the regime's campaign of, vi of violence against your brothers and sisters, the more it will stain your honor. This was the Secretary's comment to the military and to the business community that still supports him. And in contrast, if you refuse to shoot, if you refuse to kill your brothers and sisters or prop up the regime and take part in attacks, your fellow citizens, your countrymen and women will hail you as heroes. So the other point of pressure is to try to appeal to the humanity, to the true patriots and citizens inside Syria to stop supporting the bloodshed. Now, on this very point, there was also a call, obviously, uh, on the military basically to defect. You know, and when the military defect, that is going to exacerbate violence rather than stem down the violence. So how do you, how do you reconcile these two positions? I don't understand your point, Saeed. What, what my, my, she was let, saying... Let me, let me ask you, yeah. uh, try to clarify. Yeah. Uh, she called on the Syrian military basically to defect. And when the military defects, the, the, the military defects with its arms, it defects with, with its guns and tanks and so on, and that creates the kind of environment where more violence is likely to ensue. She didn't call on the Syrian military to join the opposition. She called on them to stop killing their own brothers and sisters, to refuse to execute the Assad regime's orders and refuse to fire on innocents. It is he who is giving the orders. So if they refuse to obey the orders, as we've seen in other transitions, you remember that the Egyptian military refused to fire on its own people. Uh, the Yemeni uh, opposition also wanted peace. The Yemeni military refused to fire on its people. So to join 
uh, it's, it's uh, fellows in, in uniform who refuse to execute bloody orders that they may receive from tyrants. Okay, so this is a call for them to refrain from firing on the public rather than join the opposition. She did not uh, make the second call that you assert. Quick follow up on because, the, as we've said, fundamentally, we don't think more violence is the answer. Uh, on the referendum, yeah. Uh, on the referendum, uh, do you dismiss this as a ploy by the uh, the regime to sort of prolong and perpetuate its uh, continued existence at, at the top uh, of the pyramid in, in Syrian hierarchical repression pyramid, or is it do you dismiss it because it is not enough? Well, we assert, we dismiss it as absolutely cynical. It is, uh, you know, essentially what he's done here is put a piece of paper that he controls to a vote that he controls so that he can try to maintain control. You know, it is, uh, it, even the referendum that they put forward is ridiculous in the sense that it requires that the state approve any of these patriotic opposition groups. So he's going to hand pick who gets to be in the opposition and who doesn't. And of course, there's no way to evaluate whether the vote that happened represented anything like uh, a referendum, even on the ridiculous proposal that he put forward, when the guns and the tanks and the artillery are now are still firing into homes and Hama and cities all over, all over the country. So how could you possibly have any kind of a democratic process in conditions like that? Hamas announced its total support to the revolution and the opposition. Is that a good or a bad thing? Well, obviously, the more uh, the support, the more that groups peel away from the Assad regime and supporting it, the better. Uh, that said, uh, you know, there have been concerns that some of these extremists will try to exploit the violence for their own purposes. That is not what we want to see. We want to see a peaceful, democratic, Syrian-owned transition pro process here that represents the views of all Syrians, Sunni, Alawi, Druze, Kurds, Christians, women, all the minority groups. Madam, can you confirm uh, that if still Russian and Chinese arms are still flowing to the Assad, Assad Rashid in Syria and also unless until they stop then military will automatically stop firing their own people. I'm sorry, I didn't understand your last point, Goyal. That unless, uh, until, if the arms supply from Russia and China stops, then I'm sure the Syrian military will stop firing their own people. Well, as the Secretary made clear, he is fighting his own people. He is firing on, militant, on, on, on innocence using this massive military machine that he has built up over the years with Russian support, with Iranian support. I can't speak to what is still coming in. We have concerns that uh, neither of those countries nor China has renounced arming of the Assad regime and continues to, to support him. So again, this is, this is our point to these regime, to these countries, that if they want to do some good here, even, even as we may have our disagreements about how a transition may go forward, if they want to do some good here, they can use their influence with Assad to silence his guns. And that has to happen now. If you're still talking to them, what is the reaction from China and Russia now at this time? Well, I think they've, you've seen their public statements. I'm not going to speak from, for them. Andy? Well, to follow up on that, the Chinese public statement in reaction to the Secretary's comments was very strong and, and essentially said that the U.S. was being super arrogant in trying to dictate uh, how this should play out. What is the, how can you, on the one hand, appeal to them to join your effort to bring the, the guns to a halt and at the same time call them despicable and call them out publicly the way that the Secretary did in Tunis? How does that work? Well, first of all, we're joined by the 137 countries who supported the view that the United States has, that the Arab League has, that the EU has about how to end this conflict and move forward as represented in the UN General Assembly vote a week ago. Add to that the very clear articulation of the way forward by the 60 countries representing the great majority of the world's nations from all continents at the Friends of, Sy of the Syrian People Conference 
just last Friday. So it is China, it is Russia, it is Iran that they are the outliers in continuing to 